Annette Cargadorian. I'm the board member with Armenian National Committee of America in Burbank. But instead of giving you facts and figures about the genocide, which you've undoubtedly heard many a time, and some of which were mentioned in the video, uh, I want to tell you a personal story which had a direct impact on me, and that might surprise you considering my relatively young age. Uh, but it's a story about my father and his family. Uh, my father was born at the very end of 1919 in Marash, Turkey. And at that time, in the teens, actually, his father, my grandfather, was very uh, well-known, very respected. So they actually led a fairly decent life in the teens. Um, however, in January of 1920, there was a, quite a severe uprising. And about 300 people in that community, 300 Armenian people in that community, instead of being slaughtered, decided to escape. So these 300 people, including my father, which, who was two months old, and his family of six siblings, or five siblings, six is him, um, and his parents, decided to escape to a hospital called Beit Shalom, which was in Marash, Turkey. But, of course, at that time, you can't just leave the house and say, bye, we're leaving, because you would have been shot. So they had the houses that were close to one another, or in some cases, sharing a wall. They would break the wall, cut a hole in it from one house to the next house, then break the other wall so they could go from this house to the next house, and so on, until they reached the hospital, Beit Shalom. So uh, 300 people congregated in this hospital for about 30 days. And they got food by going back through the hole. One or two people would go back through those holes in the walls to get food from the houses, whatever happened to be there, and bring them back. Uh, it was rather typical for the Turks to, any time that they saw a group of Armenians congregated in a building, they would uh, cut off the water supply and set fire to the building. This is exactly what they did with the hospital. They realized after a few days that there were 300 Armenians in there. So they cut off the water supply, set fire to the building. However, my grandfather had built that hospital. And the reason that he hadn't been hurt before the 1920 period was because he was highly respected. He had built schools and hospitals and mosques even. So they actually had let him alone up until the 1920s. So since he had built the uh, hospital, he knew where the water pipes were underneath. So everybody started digging, and they got the water, put out the fire. So the 300 people were actually saved for the time being. Um, the Turks thought, oh, this is a miracle. How could that possibly happen? It's a, it's a mark of God, and they actually left. So these people went back to their homes. Some decided to walk out and try to walk to Syria outside and leave Turkey. Uh, this is January 1920, quite cold, frigid, icy. Some people died. But uh, my grandfather's family was actually rather well off at the time because they were quite respected in the community. And he, uh, in order to fully escape permanently, he ordered a car in 1920, uh, which is a big feat considering. So uh, in order for him the, not to arouse any suspicions to the city, he ended up being going to the city center on purpose to remain visible, highly visible, but at the same time his wife and his six children were preparing to depart. So when it was evening time, they all packed in the car and they went off to Syria. Um, the big, one of the biggest fears for my grandfather was he had four daughters at the time and two young sons. And the daughters happened to be relatively cute, you know, blonde, green-eyed, blue-eyed children. And it was very customary at that time to steal the young children and give them to Turkish families. So he was very afraid of that. And even though he was respected, there were periods of time where everybody was being slaughtered. So they left. When they reached Syria, he saw too many mosques wasn't too happy about that considering what had already occurred. So they decided to keep going to Lebanon, which is where I was born, actually. 
Now, had there not been any ethnic cleansing, uh, my father would have remained in Turkey, probably become a very prominent family, actually quite well off. Uh, instead, of course, they ended up with zero and having to start again with absolutely nothing and uh, leaving at age 12 to leave school so that he could feed his siblings. So had that not occurred, I'm sure my life would have also been very different. So I consider that a very direct result to me. Um, why is this so important? It's an old story, but the fact is, it's still occurring. It's still occurring now. Just this month, an Armenian clergyman was attacked in Turkey. This month. This is not an old story. The only difference is, it's not on such a grand scale as it used to be. That is strictly the only difference. The same atrocities are continuing, just on a slightly smaller scale. So this is why it's very important to all of us. 